Hello you carpy lot and welcome to How To Carping with Scotty P. Today we're going to cover um, a bit of fish care and fish safety. Um, I think that this is a vital part of your uh, tackle box. Yeah, um, it is one of the most important skills you'll ever learn. There's no point in turning up to a fishery and not knowing how to care for the fish once you've caught them. Um, so yeah, so we're going to cover the cradles, slings, um, why we use them. We're also going to cover um, the some antiseptic um, sprays and stuff that you can use to help with the healing of the uh, wounds on the fish. Right guys, welcome back to How To Carping. It is the middle of the night, it's about a uh, quarter past 12 I think. Um, and I've just had my second carp, but the first one since I started filming. Um, so, carp care. How you should treat a carp while it's in your care, yeah? So, what I have here is a bucket of water. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wet my hands, yeah? If it's a bit hot day, you wanna, you wanna wet your, your uh, well, you wanna wet your, um, cradle and everything before you put the carp in anyway right so the first thing we're going to do is i don't want to keep them out too long is just give them a bit of water yeah right and the reason we wet our hands is because the carp has a protective layer on him yeah and then what we're going to do is we're going to show him up to the camera for a quick photo yeah keeping him nice and low to our cradle so that if he does um start to flap and rock around yeah, then we can place him down or we can just roll him back into our arms like so until he stops flapping around and then we hold him back over the cradle and lift him back up for another snap. Yeah? Right. And then guys, once you've taken your photo and you're ready to put the carp back, send the carp back into the water on his merry way. Yeah. Right. We've just got some corda antiseptic. Yeah. I mean, it, all you're going to do is you're going to take a cotton wool bud. Yeah, we're going to get Mr. Carp in position. Yeah, we can see what it is. And all we're going to do is we're going to put some of this just around the inside of his mouth, just where the hook was. See, so I'm just gonna squeeze a little bit more on there. Yeah, and I'm just putting it around the inside of his mouth just to make sure that he doesn't get any form of infections. All right. So next what we're gonna do is give him a little bit more water, right? Constantly supply him with water. Yeah, keep him wet the whole time you've got him out. Yeah, and then we're gonna zip up our retaining sling. All right. Oh, I'll be back. Now, before we move him, we're just going to check to make sure his fins are nice and flat against his body on both sides. So we don't cause any damage. All right. Back. For transportation of the fish to and from the lake, I used a Tracker V2 weighing and retaining sling. I use this one because it has lots of holes to allow water flow and it is made of very soft material so it is not rough on the fish. I mainly use this for transportation of the fish safely to and from the lake. As you can see it has zips which means the carp are very safe while you're transporting them from your cradle or mat back to the lake. They can't jump out mid-transfer. Right, yeah, now nice. let's let this one back out of the retaining sling and send him off home. This next picture is the perfect example as why you should have a cradle or a very well padded mat. I have the Kudos cradle. I bought this because it is cheap, but it does the job. It is soft and well padded, so if the fish does jump out of my hands, it won't fall to the floor and cause itself harm. This brings me on to my next point. 
As you notice in all of my videos, you never see me standing up whilst holding a fish for a photo or a video. This should be the same in your fishing. Do not stand with a fish. If the fish was to jump out of your hands and was to slam against the floor, it's going to cause itself harm. Likelihood is it will die. And then we'll never ever see that fish ever again. If you guys are using a mat, make sure that it is well padded and has the walls on the side so that if the fish does flap around, then it's not going to slide down the bank and cause itself harm. We want to return the fish back in the same pristine condition we caught them in, so that it is just as beautiful at £30 as it was at 10 Hello you carpet lot and welcome back to How To Carping, episode number 3. And what we're going to do now is we're going to cover another part of watercraft, um, which is using your marker rod to find spots out on the lake. All right, so what I'm going to show you now is how I set up my marker rod ready to use. All right, so I take my marker weight, there we go, and as you can see, I've got my rod, my, um, my leader set up on a loop to loop system. Yeah, just makes it so much easier for changing things around. Yeah, so we're gonna put our lead on first. All right, let that drop down the line. Then we're gonna take our marker float. And we're just gonna thread that through. We're gonna thread our loop through the swivel. Yeah. And then we're gonna take the end of our loop, thread it over our marker float just like so yeah as you can see and then we're just going to slide that down and we're just going to slide that down just like so until it comes to the end of the swivel there you are just like that yeah to that down there as well so that's ready right so let's get her casted out when I'm casting, I have my left foot forward and my right foot back. When I bring the rod over my head, I transfer all of my weight onto my back foot. I'm also checking to ensure there is nothing tangled. Then what I do is I punch all of my weight forward and release the line from, the, from my finger. What we're going to do next is we're going to pull the rod back through the water using the lead to fill the bottom. We're going to feel the vibrations through the braid on our marker rod which is going to give us indications of what we're fishing over. As you can see here, the marker rod is bending quite tight, which could mean that we're in a snag. I don't think we are though. Um, as you can see, it's quite a flat, smooth bottom. This lake is basically a concrete bowl, as I've explained in other videos. So you won't get much indication of gravel bars or anything like that. Um, but what you're looking for for gravel bars is for the rod tip to almost be bouncing um, like you're bouncing it off the floor almost. Right, now we've found where we want to fish, guys. What we want to know is how deep our spot is. So how we do that is by loosening off the clutch on our reel and letting out a foot of line at a time, counting up until we see the float appear at the surface of the water. I believe in this video it was about five feet. Before we reel the marker rod in, what we need to do is put the line under the line clips so we can wrap this round our distance sticks and know how far we need to set all of our other rods up so that we're fishing on the same distance each time. We found our spot. Let's find out how far out we're fishing so we can land on that spot every time we cast out. All right, don't forget what you want to also do is pick markers out in the distance so that when you're fishing at night, you know that you're, you're facing the right direction for that cast. And as, as long as you're clipped up to the wraps that you're about to mark up now, which we'll talk about in a second. All right, so what does it mean by wrapping up your rod? Wrapping up your rod is like we've, you've just seen, we've uh, casted out, we found a distance with our marker float um, and marker lead, yeah? So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go over to our distance sticks and we're going to wrap, wrap the line around the distance sticks and count how many times 
we go around the distance sticks and that's going to be our spot for the next 24 hours or 48 hours however long you're fishing all right so let's do that now so these are my distance sticks um i've paid extra for these i paid uh, i think they're about 9.99 um, but all you really need is uh, two bank sticks and just set them um, a rod length apart. So measure your rod, uh, stick one at one end and stick the rod down on the floor. Stick a um, bank stick at one end of your rod and another one at the butt end of the rod. And there you have your distance sticks. All right. Um, obviously, that's then going to save you a little bit of money. You don't have to go out and buy these all singing, all dancing, 10 uh, 10 20 pound distance sticks um, but you can do if you like all right so now, what you're going to do now is you're going to count how many times round the distance sticks you've cast it out okay there we set at 11 and a half wraps so that was just because I was showing you how to um, find a spot but I know on this lake we want to be set at around about 13 to 14 wraps that's 11 that's 12 that's 13 and that's 14 yeah and then all you do is on the line clip of your reel is wrap the line around the line clip on your reel. And that's you, all clipped up, ready and rearing to rock and roll. You know how far out you, you're casting. So then all we're gonna do is take our main carp rod and we're gonna set that at the exact same distance, all right? Well, I thought before I jump on, I thought I'd talk a little bit about night vision. Um, now, I know that sounds a bit silly, you know, humans having night vision, but we actually do. Um, now, during the day, you tend to look through, or sorry, see through your pupil. Um, at night time, that switches over to your iris. Yeah, so the coloured part of your eye. Um, now, I'm ex-military, so I've learned a lot about um, how you see at night and stuff like that. Uh, so I know that it takes about 30 to 40 minutes for your night vision to actually kick in. Now, if I was to sit here now and talk to you with my white light on, it's going to take me another 30 to 40 minutes to get my night vision back to where it was 5-10 minutes ago. Yeah. 
Um, but me sitting here with my red light on instead is gonna prevent that. And you know, it means that I can actually then turn the light off and I can actually look out over onto the lake and I'll be able to see pretty much what's going on. I'm not gonna say that you can see like everything, but you know, you can see better than when, you know, you first turn off your white light. So bear that in mind, um, especially when you're looking and talking to people with your head torch on, yeah? Don't always walk around with your white light on. Obviously, if you're playing a fish, yeah, put your white light on, right? But if you turn to talk to your friend, uh, where you just stood at the bank and you've got your head torch on, put your red light on, because one, it's gonna cause a lot of pain for him, um, and is it like, you know, when you first look at him or her, um, two, it's gonna affect their night vision. They're not gonna be able to see as well as, as you will be able to uh, with your head torch on, all right? So yeah, just bear that one in mind, guys. Tight lines. We're gonna have a look at a Slip D cart rig, yeah? So what you're gonna need is some coated braid, some hooks and some shrink tubing and don't forget a good pair of scissors. Right, so to start with you take yourself a good length yeah something similar to about there I only do it roughly I do because I make mine as long as I want them I don't have a set length or anything like that they crap There we go. Right. Then we take our hook. <coughs> we pass a line through the front of the eye. Yeah. And we create we're creating a loop like we did before. On the other, um, on the other slip, the multi rig. Sorry. So we want that. So what we're going to do is we're going to slip that then back through the eye of the hook, if I can. Yeah, just like so. All right. Then pass it back through the eye of the hook, just like so. So you end up with something that looks very similar to that. Yeah. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my bait swivel on. Yeah. It's just that little tiny thing. <coughs> And thread that over the loop that we've just created exactly the same as what we would do if we was making a multi rig. Just my fingers do not want to work this morning. Just like so. Then we slip that, we slip the loop. Just like the multi rig, over the point of the hook, and then pull it down to where we want it to sit. Yeah. So I'm going to want my bait to sit kind of in line with my um, the point of the hook. Yeah. There we go. And then we're going to do a knotless knot. So I'm going to wrap it down seven times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. And then, you can just about see there's a little gap that I can pass it back through. 
It's gonna be fun. You then pass the braid back through the back of the eye of the hook. Pulling it nice and tight. <coughs> right. So we're left with a tag end. Guess what we're gonna do with that, guys? We're gonna trim it off. Being very careful not to cut myself. Jesus scissors, that's a bit too fiddly. To use a knife. There we go. Alright, and then we want to take a bit of shrink tubing. Yeah, probably about that much, I'd say. But before we before we tighten it up, uh, before we shrink it, we're going to take our pulling tool, yeah, and we are going to pull the knotless knot down tight. There you go. Spun around there, I don't know. We'll reposition that there. There we go. Right. Then we take our little bit of shrink tube in and we pass it down the line. Yeah. Then push it over the shank of the hook. you're left with something that looks very similar to this. Yeah. Then all we're going to do is turn the kettle on. Now, it's perfect time really because I need a brew. So we just let this uh, steam up. So while we're waiting for that, oh look at that, that's boiled. Perfect timing. And there you have it. Once it's all steamed down, it will look something very similar to this. Okay. And lastly, all you have to do now is put your anti tangle sleeving on. You pass that down. The line like so and then we're just going to tie a little loop knot just at the end yeah just that we can then attach it all to our line to our main line So then we're just going to cut this tag end off, and I'm going to pull it all down nice and tight. Just one I can use a knife for. It's be easier. Yeah. So then all we're going to do is we're going to take our rig pulling tools, and then just pull, just ever so gently. Well, not gently, but quite hard just make sure not too hard that you don't pull the shape of the hook out yeah so we're just gonna pull everything nice and straight and then that is our final product